Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue Vendillion clique deck, which got recently added to Arena through the Historic Anthology expansion. A 3 mana 3 1 flash flyer, and when it enters a battlefield, we get to take a look at target player's hand. We may choose a non land card from it. If we do, that player reveals the chosen card, puts it on the bottom of their library, and then draws a card. So this could also potentially target ourselves if the opponent is maybe empty handed, or if we have a banned card we want to get rid of and potentially replace with a random card off the top. So the most important thing about Vendillion Click is that it has flash, so we can play it alongside all our counter spells, and then if we don't need to counter anything, we can still flash in our clique, give us some information about what the opponent is working with, and then have a flying threat that can start pressuring the opponent. So the flash is incredibly valuable. And then taking a look at our deck, I've got it broken down into a few different categories. We've got mana acceleration, interaction, ways to bounce things that are already in play for instance. We've got some card draw effects, not a ton of it, but we also have a few creatures that can provide value. And that's the next section, a lot of creatures that synergize well with counter spells and other blue instants. And then the huge category here is counter spells. We can counter everything from cheap creatures with a stern scolding all the way to expensive spells with spell swindle to make a bunch of treasure. So that's what this deck is all about. Keep up counter spells, counter the important threats, let the less important cards resolve, and then try to outvalue the opponents and eventually kill them with some of our flying creatures. And then we also have a few ways to take extra turns with time warp and Karn's temporal sundering so we can keep hitting the opponent with our Vendillion clique and some of our other evasive creatures. So that's a rough breakdown of our deck. Now for a more detailed look, starting with our ramp artifacts, we've got Arcane Signet and Mindstone at 2 mana, only playing the ones that can immediately tap for mana, so we can maybe play them later in the game and still play a counter spell alongside them to have those very efficient turns. Midnight Clock is also great as a way to eventually refuel once we get the 12th Midnight counter on it, we can also sink additional mana into it to speed up the process. The Celestis is also perfect in a deck that has all these instant Instance. Since we can easily pass a turn, let it switch to Knight, we get to draw and discard and gain a life, and then we can initiate the process of improving our hand as the game progresses while ramping. And then Gilded Lotus is also very nice, as we can play it and still play a 3-drop afterwards, so we can even play our commander afterwards if we haven't cast it yet, or one of our many 3-mana counter spells. And then we've got a few interactive cards that can handle things that are already in play, such as Fading Hope to bounce a creature, Witness Protection, very effective at shutting down opposing creature commanders as they lose all abilities, and then we can try to close out the game by flying over with Vendillion Clique, so we can sort of ignore the 1-1 one -one on the ground and take the hit. Then we've got Cyclonic Rift, which can be cast for 2 mana to bounce a single permanent, or we can potentially overload it for 7 mana, and then it turns into an instant speed Rivers Rebuke, which we also have to bounce all opposing non-land permanents back to the opponent's hand. And then Into the Royal can be played for 2 mana or kicked for 4 mana, in which case we get to draw a card in addition to bouncing a non-land permanent. And then in our card draw category, we've got Consider and Opt as 1 mana cantrips, Impulse gets to dig pretty deep, We've got Search for Ascanta, which can eventually transform into the Sunken Ruin, which we can activate to find more non-creature spells, so it can be an awesome source of card advantage. Behold, the Multiverse is quite flexible, as we get to first foretell it and then cast it for 2 mana instead of the full 4. We've got Memory Deluge, which can be cast for 4 mana and then flashed back for 7, getting to look at quite a few cards to put two of them in hand. And then Flow of Knowledge is one of the better payoffs for having all these islands in our mana base, as we get to draw a card for each island we control and then discard two, so it can easily get out of hand in the late game. And the Immortal Sun also quite good here, since we don't have any Planeswalkers in the deck, so this will shut them all down while drawing extra cards each turn and giving our spells a one mana discount, and even pumping up our creatures. Then in our creatures section we start with Baral, which is a nice payoff for having all these counter spells, also makes all our instants and sorceries one cheaper, and whenever we counter something we get to draw and then discard to find more counter spells. Then we've got two fairies, Mastermind and Vandal, can both be flashed in if we didn't need to counter anything at 2 mana. And then Mastermind's also quite synergistic with Vendillion Clique, since we can target the opponent with Clique, let them draw, and now the Mastermind will also draw us an extra card, because the opponent has drawn two during their turn. And then the Vandal will grow as we draw additional cards as well. We've got Snapcaster Mage to get back our counter spells from the graveyard. Thing in the Ice will slowly melt away as we cast Instants and Sorceries and then transforms into the Awoken Horror, which will bounce everything back and give us a 7-8 to start pressuring the opponent. 
Academy Loremaster is one of my favorites, since our deck is designed to play at instant speed, so we can easily draw an extra card off of it each turn, whereas the opponent is unlikely to do the same. The Wavebreak Hippocamp can also draw us an extra card if we cast a spell during the opponent's turn. Brazen Borrower is quite flexible, can bounce something, so also kind of counts as our interaction, and then a 3-1 Flash Flyer afterwards. We've got Haughty Djinn, as well as Tempest Djinn, as creatures that can close out the game pretty quickly for toughness, flying, and then Haughty Djinn also gives us a 1 mana discount. Displacer Kitten's also pretty fun with Vendillion Click. When we cast a non-creature spell, we can essentially flicker one of our creatures, and if we flicker Vendillion Click, we can take a look at the opponent's hand once again, and there's a few other synergies throughout the deck. There's Talrand Sky Summoner, giving us a 2-2 Flying Drake whenever we cast an instant or sorcery. Voracious Great Shark can counter an artifact or creature when it enters. Got Shark Typhoon, can be cycled to make a shark token while drawing, or we can be brave and cast the 6-mana enchantment to make more sharks. Torrential Gearhulk can get back one of our instants when it enters, so often gets back a counter spell. And Tolarian Terror can be played on the cheap if we have a full graveyard as a 5-5 with Ward 2. And then now it's time for the counter spells, starting with Spell Pierce, counter a non-creature spell unless the opponent pays 2. Scolding counters a creature spell with power or toughness 2 or less. Wash Away can counter the opponent's commander for a single mana or just a 3 mana counter spell. Sensor can be cycled for a single blue or counter unless the opponent pays 1. Change the Equation counters a spell with mana value 2 or less, and against the red and green spells can go up to 6. Disdainful Stroke counters a spell with mana value 4 or greater. Gale counters a creature spell, and if it was a legendary, the ring tempts us. Good Memory Lapse to put a spell back on top of the opponent's library. Negate counters non-creature spell, Tails and counters a legendary, trigger ability or activated ability, so usually just countering an opposing commander. Counter spell, of course, can go wrong, counter any spell for 2 mana. Essence Capture counters a creature spell, gives us a plus 1 counter as well. Exclude can counter a creature and draw card. Unwind counter non-creature, untap 3 lands. Disallow can counter anything, including an activated or triggered ability. Ertai's Scorn potentially gets a 1 mana discount. We've got Saruman's Trickery, letting us amass Orcs 1, making a 1 1 army token. We've got a Wizard's Retort, gets a discount if we control a Wizard, and Vendillion Click is indeed a Wizard. We've got Archmage's Charm, quite flexible, can counter, draw 2, or maybe steal a 1 drop. And Bone to Ash is an expensive exclude, counters a creature and draws a card. Dismiss can counter anything and draw a card. Rewind counters and untaps 4 land so we can cast something else. Spell Swindle will counter and make treasures equal to the mana value. And Sublime Epiphany can do a lot of things, including countering a spell, will also draw a card, bounce something and maybe copy a creature, and in rare cases also counter an activated or triggered ability. And then our extra turn cards include Time Warp, and we've got Karn's Temporal Sundering, which requires a legendary creature in play for us to cast it, but with Vendelian Click that's usually not a problem. And then our mana base, 34 islands, want a lot of them for Flow of Knowledge, but then we also have Castle Ventress to maybe scry alongside Rivendell, enters untapped if we control a legendary, and then it's a bit cheaper to activate than the castle. We've got Hall of the Storm Giants as an excellent creature land. Mystic Sanctuary can get back an instant or sorcery if we play it with enough islands in play, and then a Soaring City can also be channeled to bounce something. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Atraxa, Praetor's Voice. Our hand's a little on the pricey side, but uh, we've got some effective counter spells. Change the Equation can hit their commander. Dismiss if we can cast it, a nice 2 for 1. And then Gear Hulk to eventually flash it back. So we've got a 2-drop, 3-drop, 4-drop, 5-drop, 6-drop. That's what we call a perfect curve. Counter spell, always great. Three mana, still nothing. Okay, I'll keep up a counter spell, and then if they still don't do anything, we can click the end of turn. If it dies, that's fine. Just want to know what they're working with, and we've got more pressure coming up. Could also click myself, Veil of Summer. I guess it's gonna force me to click myself, and I actually don't think we need Rivers Rebuke. Opponent hasn't put any permanence in play yet. And then now keep up Dismiss, probably. Or we could search for Ascanta, keep up a 2-mana counter. At least that puts a bit of pressure on them to make something happen. And can help us hit our land drops. Even though Dismiss is pretty sweet if we can resolve it. Tasha, yeah, let's uh, counter that. Otherwise... Clique can no longer attack. 
don't need Fading Hope. And the more cards we surveil into the graveyard, the better. Has been changed to surveil now. So I don't hate my spots. We've got a Search. That's kind of ticking up. Cleek pressuring them and then good counter spells in hand. Narsets. Yeah, probably need to dismiss since that's going to prevent us from drawing in the future. Don't need Island anymore, and now we've got Gear Hulk Dismiss at the ready, which is about as good as it gets. Already down to 12. They need to be able to double spell two powerful threats in the same turn. And uh, yeah, I think we Gear Hulk, even though I could Great Shark. Maybe that's still better since Great Shark might not get the opportunity to counter a creature later. We've got four cards in Graveyard, so still a long way to go for Search. Get to untap. Yeah, it's gonna be tough for the opponent. Don't need Scolding. I'm just gonna keep up Gear Hulk. No need for Celestis. Even though it is also a way of helping us fill the graveyard for us contact, it switches between day and night. Poon's at four. It's gonna be tough. Professor Onyx is uh, probably not gonna resolve. Unless her opponent's got a two mana answer, and yeah, Gear Hulk Dismiss is just too much value. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali, Primal Conqueror, her red green ramp. And uh, yeah, our hand's decent. Hopefully, get to transform a thing in the ice. I'm gonna try to hang on to Sanctuary so we can uh, maybe get back a counter spell. Opt could be held until after we play Thing in the Ice. Probably don't need to counterspell on turn two. I think that's reasonable. And then at four toughness, Thing in the Ice is not the easiest for red green to deal with. And could give us a fast clock to try and close out the game. Opponent off to a good start with Gracer helping them ramp. Hope we can hit our land drop. So we don't have to waste Sanctuary. Cultivate's a good one. Now Wizard's Retort. Okay, so... Could keep up Essence Capture counter spell. Could opt to try and hit our land drop. And then still have those available without needing to use Sanctuary. I think it's worth the risk here. Midnight Clock wouldn't be bad, but gotta dig for a land. Perfect. Pass it back. And a Domri. We'll make their stuff uncounterable, so I kinda have to counterspell Domri. Thing in the Ice levels up. And Ornithopter. Okay, so Sanctuary get back Counterspell seems good. Going for Opt also reasonable. Kogla and Hidaro instead. Let's Essence Capture. So Thing in the Ice is about to transform. Yeah, can play Mindstone and pass, or we can keep up both counter spells and maybe play Cleek after transforming Thing in the Ice. Escape to the Wilds, that's kind of a must counter here. So let's oblige, and then I can play Cleek afterwards. So we now have an 8-9 to try and close out the game. And let's play Vandillion Click, target the opponent, see what else they're working with. Once upon a time they can keep. Okay, 
Okay, so your opponent's just working with a tally, which is a good card, admittedly. But, uh, still have a Wizard's Retort in hand. Mindstone, we can cycle. Opponent casts once upon a time, so not going for a tally yet. And there we go. So let's counter. And draw with Mindstone. And hope to find one more counter spell. Tolerant. And how about a flow of knowledge? Yeah, let's fire that off. And our opponent has seen enough. Temporal Sundering could take an extra turn. Memory Lapse to counter Itali. Awesome. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got a few ways to take extra turns. Rebuke to bounce stuff. But no real interaction early. And against Aragorn, we can take a lot of damage early. So this hand's pretty sketchy. But it is pretty fun if we can pull it off. Let's try it. Can uh, foretell behold and then try and hit our land drops with it. Best case scenario, we just get to curve out, turn to masterminds, into cleek, into behold, and then take an extra turn, take an extra turn, and yeah, it's looking good so far. Three mana for cultivate. That's gonna resolve. So yeah, let's just hit for two, represent a counter spell, and then click end of turn, but opponent may just tap out for Aragorn here. Nope, it's gonna be a glorious sunrise. That we don't really care about. So yeah, can click them now. See what they're working with. A wandering Emperor, Absorb, Great Henge, and Orrery. Some pretty good cards. I think Emperor is probably the most annoying. They have the double white with Iganjo, which is another card they could potentially channel. Yeah, let's take the Emperor. And then Mastermind also triggers, which is pretty fun. Okay, so we did pick up Change the Equation as a counter spell. I could play Haughty Jin and then still have Change the Equation available. Although our opponent could just run out Chromatic Orrery. And then maybe go for Aragorn, which we can counter. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And then Haughty Jin plots his Time Warp next turn if we don't draw land. Alternative is maybe Foretell Behold. But this seems more fun. So our opponent does run out Aiganjo, Sunrise to make extra mana. And yep, yeah, there's the Orrery. Into Aragorn, which we can counter at least. And then now untap. Take a few extra turns. Sundering can bounce Orrery again. Yeah, let's uh, time warp. And hope to draw land next turn. Memory Lapse isn't bad either, although now we're unable to rebuke. Opponent does get to untap with Orrery, which will add a ton of mana. So, could still be an interesting game. Probably want to Behold to hit our land drops. And grow Haughty Jin. Cyclonic Rift could bounce Orrery. And then hope to draw land afterwards. Sure. Perfect. So let's Rift. Attack and have Memory Lapse up. And hopefully that'll seal the deal. Opponent just replays Aragorn. Can Lapse. And then next turn, Temporal Sundering to rub it in onto the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw, facing opposite odds of Ghost Council. Our hand doesn't have any expensive counter spells, just a stern scolding early, and double gin could be fun. Maybe not the best matchup for double gin if our opponent's got a lot of spot removal. Lunark Veterans, opponent leaning into the life gain synergies. But at least Search for Ascanta can help grow Hoddy Jin. Bone to Ash wasn't bad, good counter to Obsidat. Alright, could tap out for Search for Ascanta, I think that's reasonable. Get that going. And then turn 3, we'll have to decide if we want to tap out for one of our Jins or maybe Flash and Cleek instead. Power Stone, all right. Opponent could already play opposite on next turn. Spell Pierce is a bit late to the party, so let's just bottom that. So I don't actually have a counter spell for opposite on, so that's a problem, since that's going to be hard to beat. But I guess we can represent a counter spell and then flash and click instead, and hope they don't go for it yet. All right, it's going to be a Sarah Ascendant. Funnily enough, we can Stern Scolding to counter, despite it potentially being a 6-6. Uh, right now it's still only a 1-1. Yeah, close call. I think we let them keep it. Cleek can also just pressure their life total now, since we're going to play Cleek end of turn. But they could of course have some instant speed removal. Alright, let's see what's up. I think Scolding's still going to find targets later. The alternative would be to click myself, get rid of the Scolding, but I think we'll get good use out of it. Opponent did have removal, that's fine. Can still take a look at their hand. Feed the Swarm and Veto. So Feed the Swarm is an answer to Search Roskanta, and can also kill my creatures. Veto, pretty good with all the life gain and drain, but I'll take the Feed the Swarm. And then Dismiss seems awesome. The only problem with Dismiss and Bone to Ash is that we still need to answer Sarah Ascendant at some point. Otherwise it's gonna run away with the game. But for now I'm kind of forced to keep up a counter spell. Otherwise Obzidant's just gonna lay down the hammer. So Search Roskant has a long way to go still. We can Bone to Ash. Counter draw. Scolding also would have worked. But it's not like I could have uh, double spelled alongside it, so might as well get the value. And uh, Pilgrim. Alright, not bad. So opponent goes up to 28 here. Islands. I guess we'll bottom so we can flip Ascanta sooner. Although, could use an extra land. Keep playing Islands for Tempest Jin. So now I could play Haughty Jin, keep up Tails Ends for Obsidats. And then we can scold something else potentially, and then Haughty Jin can hopefully start pressuring the opponents. So the Ascendant doesn't grow into a 6-6 six, six flyer. So we'll take two. And time for opposite odds. So let's Tails end. And now we're kind of in full control. Got some more answers in hand. Lotus will make mana. Although mana's not really our concern. Although it would be sweet to get in play, admittedly. Sure, I'll keep it. But I will need to find another counter spell soon. And then we'll get a hit in with Haughty Jin. Keep up Dismiss, since our opponent can replay Obsidant next turn. And then Ascanta's close to transforming. Can be a Witch of the Moors, also a must counter. So now we're out of answers for Obsidat. Never mind. Skanta Sanctuary, I mean, that's tempting. Hit or land drop, get back a dismiss. And then I can play Tempest Jin, keep up Spell Swindle. Double Jin. 
And we could also clique. Overseer we can scold. And then I could scry with Vantress or play clique, although the ability is not going to do much. Now let's just take two. Play clique. And uh, doesn't matter here. Keep dismiss. And then get in for a healthy amount. Bonus at 11. We can counter two spells, and next turn we should have lethal. Sweet. Yeah, definitely got lucky there to find some of those key counter spells. And uh, yeah, good to see the power of Vendilling Clique, even though it didn't actually stick the landing. Still gave us some valuable information to plan ahead. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Emoti, Blue-Green Ramp. And yeah, Cascade is still gonna resolve even if we counter Emoti, so that's pretty annoying. But I think we still have to keep this hands. Spell Pierce can counter an early Ramp spell or artifact. And then uh, Time Warp can give us an extra turn where our Flyers can beat down. Spell Pierce is going to lose effectiveness pretty quickly, so need to get it out of our hand as quickly as possible. So I don't think we want to Vendillion Cleek this turn, keep up our counter spells, but maybe next turn alongside Spell Pierce it could be effective. Nylia discounts creatures, doesn't really do anything by itself. And we could also bounce it with a Borrower if we'd like. So maybe I do actually just click now. And see what else they're working with. Okay, well those are some scary creatures. Although they're all pretty expensive. Nylia gives them a discount. Yeah, we have some very relevant interactions. I don't think we actually take anything here. Next turn, opponent's going to play Emoti, most likely. And then we can see if we want to counter it. Could also bounce Nylia. And then still have Tails End if they draw land for Emoti. Yeah, I guess bouncing with Borrowers, not the worst. Start applying a bit more pressure. Maybe time warp after we play Brazen Borrower. So there's Nylia, good Tails end now. And then I still have Charm to counter Kogla. Although could have let Nylia resolve potentially. Get in for four. So if our opponent plays Emoti, probably let it resolve and then just flash and borrower untap time warp. But we'll see what they cascade into. Can still counter whatever free spell they get. Carry it, that's fine. I guess Scorn was enabled, so I could have Scorned for two mana. No need. And the uh, change the equation should also be pretty powerful in this matchup. So we can attack, time warp, and then our opponent should just be dead here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Gideon of the Trials, and our hand seems acceptable. A little bit on the pricey side, but Spell Swindle can generate quite a bit of mana if it lines up. And then Cleek can be a way of pressuring Gideon. Nothing from our opponent so far. And a Restoration of Iganjo. I could Memory Lapse, or we can let it resolve play Cleek. Since most of my counters are hard counters here, so opponent getting head of mana is not a huge concern. The 3 4 could eventually be annoying. So maybe I should still intervene here. Sure, let's just memory lapse. And not get our click in play yet. Sanctuary can get back memory lapse, or we can wait to get something juicier back. Also better to play click after they play Gideon, so we can start pressuring it. 
Bonin just replays Restoration. I think we'll charm it now. Next turn we can Spell Swindle. Putting Charm back with Sanctuary would be decent. Pretty flexible card. And hope they tap out for something expensive. Gideon. Yeah, I mean, Gideon's not bad, but we can try and pressure it with a clique. Kind of want to spell swindle something more expensive. Prepare to defend yourself. I'm going in. Could see some removal, but it's not like why it's got a ton of instant speed removal that we care about. Okay, so approach. We would love to counter Gideon Blank Blade. Not a huge problem. Faithbound Judge could potentially get in the way. So maybe that's worth taking. And then start hitting Gideon. Opponent can plus on the clique, so then we'll need a different way to pressure Gideon. But that's where the Gear Hulk can also come in handy. So kind of wish I had left Charm in the graveyard to draw to if we don't need to counter anything. So want to wait on Spell Swindle until we can counter some of those seven drops. Heliods, okay. So I could Gear Hulk Memory Lapse. Opponent plays Gideon Blank Blade. I think Heliod's fine. Doesn't really do much by itself. Would prefer to counter Gideon. Can also just draw two with a charm. So that happens. Now it's my turn. Yeah, let's draw. And rewind this excellence. And so is Lotus. Okay. So, play Lotus. And then we can pass. Vendelin won't be able to deal any damage here because of Gideon. But now we've got essentially three counter spells in hand. I've been waiting for this. Smothering Tithe. I don't think that's a problem. We've got a lot of mana to work with. I can just pay the two. Pass it back. Yeah, I really want them to commit one of their seven drops so we can spell swindle it. And then Gear Hulk might want to flash back Archmage's Charm to draw, even if that plays into the Smothering Tithe. Heal is also close to being a creature, so I have to watch out for that. And it's going to be an Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, so that would enable Heliod. Opponent can also escape it later, but there's not much in Graveyard at the moment. So maybe that is worth countering at long last. Can rewind and then still Gear Hulk, flashback charm. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. What if we just let it resolve, opponent makes some 1-1s, one -ones, but it's mainly Heliod that I'm worried about, hitting us for 5. Alright, opponent plays Emiria to play Gideon Blank Blade. So now might be the time for Gear Hulk. And then just counter it. With uh, Rewind is fine. Can finish off Gideon. Still have our spell swindle for approach. And now Vendilli Click can start pressuring them. How do you feel about a rematch? The escape here is four author cards. So that's still gonna be a while. Farewell, certainly worth countering. Stroke versus spell swindle. I'm leaning spell swindle. 
even though a stroke can't counter Gideon. Make six treasure. And this would be a good time to find some card draw effects. Soaring City could also bounce one of the opponent's enchantments here. Spell Swindle resolves. Take our turn. And a Bone to Ash. Can uh, counter a creature and draw. Get in for eight. Now we can also use Soaring City to bounce our own Gear Hulk. And then maybe replay it on Archmage's Charm. Could be fun. Opponent does now get closer to escaping Elspeth, but not quite. And looks like our opponent may have disconnected, and they explode. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Scarab God, blue-black control. And uh, yeah, our hand's not the worst. Could foretell Behold the Multiverse to help hit our land drops. Lore Master might be taken out by spot removal, so I might want to wait until I can protect it, but could also be very nice in the matchup if our opponent's mostly playing at sorcery speed and we get to draw an extra card each turn. And Dread Wonder, so maybe it's more of a zombie aggro deck. Alright, in that case, also because we hit our land drop, I think we play Lore Master. If I didn't hit a land drop, then probably safer to foretell behold the multiverse so we can at least next turn scry to and draw to to hit our land drop so we'll see if the opponent wants to draw an extra card and be unable to cast anything during their turn they want to curve out and red horde invasion that's fine okay let's uh, draw an additional card can still foretell behold the multiverse for two mana or we can uh, keep a Vandillion click, which is probably better, and then I can rewind and be holding the same turn next turn. So probably put a stop in their draw step. Keep Lore Master back to hold off Wander. Opponent can decide. And yeah, let's play Vandillion click. See what they're working with. Okay, Village Rides to draw two. Contempt as removal. Kalitas is pretty scary. Uh, and a Chromatic Lantern. So this turn, they could go Lantern into Village Rides. So might want to take the Lantern. They could still Village Rides to draw. I guess I'm not too concerned about the Lantern itself, except for it enables Scarab God next turn, although we have that covered with Rewind. So, yeah, maybe Village Rites is a card we least want them to have, since they can sack a 1-1 and draw two. Seems pretty strong. So there's Lantern. Lantern does make it easier for the opponent to pay the two for Lore Master, but that's okay. Hit for three. And then rewinds into some other instant is going to be pretty sweet. Picked up a bounce spell. If our opponent keeps up Vraska's Contempt, they can make it a little awkward for us if we want to tap out. And yeah, that's what they'll do. Could still just flash in a Brazen Borrower or cast Behold the Multiverse anyways. And then our opponent's gonna either get rid of Lore Master or Cleek. I think we should just Behold. And then Haughty Gen seems good. SS Capture also has plenty of targets. So I'll keep both. Alright, opponent doesn't seem too concerned here about casting Vraska's Contempt. Do we want to draw an additional card? Maybe this turn I want to tap out for Midnight Clock, although Spell Swindle is also tempting. So let's just decline, since we're going to have to discard to hand size anyway. Can play Haughty Gin, keep up Essence Capture for the more problematic cards, and then see what's up. Amalgam, okay, can SS capture that so they don't get to counter anything. 
Although that does mean keeping the door open for Scarab God or Kalitas, although we can bounce it back with a Borrower and then counter it on the way down. So I think that's okay. Resolve our Hadijin and Grove and Dealing Click. There is a turn where they could resolve something scary, such as maybe a Reverse Rebuke or Time Warp take an extra turn. But uh, yeah, we know a few cards in their hand at least that are manageable. So they could tap out for Scarab God. Ooh, blood on the snow. That's not what we wanted to see. Yep, we get back Red Wanderer. So that's definitely a setback. Epiphany's not bad. So now what's six mana? I can play Tall Rand, so only have Brazen Borrower available. Could be a decent spot for Spell Swindle. If I Midnight Clock, I can still rewind. And then flash in maybe a Brazen Borrower. I do want to have a creature in play before casting Epiphany, ideally. So maybe we get the Midnight Clock going. Could also just tap out for Tall Rand. If they want to exile it, fine. If not, we get to make an army of drakes. So one unknown left in hand. And our opponent's going to play it safe. Exile Tall Rand. Get in for two. But yeah, we still got to develop our mana. And we've got a ton of cards left in hand, thanks to the Lore Master. So now seven mana total. What's the plan? Probably just pass a turn. Could maybe opt to try and hit my land drop. And Rivendell will enter tapped, but I'll take it. So our opponent's got eight mana total. So our opponent does not have enough mana to play Scarab God and Kalitas. So they're gonna go for a Scarab God, which we can spell swindle, make five treasure. That seems good. Did our opponent have a counter spell left? That would be pretty powerful here. Nope. Do we want to do anything end of turn? Yeah, sure. I think I'll actually bounce Chromatic Lantern to set them back on mana a little bit. Opponent does seem to be holding some instance. Not sure which one. Okay. So we can pass a turn. Could check if the coast is clear with Vandillion Click, but... Let's just wait and see what our opponent does first. Could have tried to counter the Fabled Passage trigger with Epiphany, which would have been pretty funny. But let's just try and counter a spell instead. Okay, Chromatic Lantern. That's fine, so they have six mana left. Trying to get in for five. So I might want to start picking a fight now. Could also animate Hall of the Storm Giants for what it's worth and just ambush one of their creatures. And if they have an Edict effect, I can still rewind. So we'll block. And call it also the next. So what if we Sublime Epiphany? What happens? Let's see. 7-7 seven, seven, Giant Creature with Ward 3. Kind of just want to see what happens. Counter, Bounce, Copy, and Draw. So we can Bounce Chromatic Lantern again. Copy Hall, Draw Card. And yeah, there's our Hall token. That's pretty sweet. 
So we just want to start emptying our hand for this midnight clock. Can maybe draw step put a stop for Vanillin click. Although we were close to just winning the game with two hulls. Alright, so now we can click. And see what they're working with. It's gonna be a Crux of Fates and an Erebosis Intervention, so a Sweeper and a Spot Removal Spell. Okay, probably worth it to take one of those. Let's say the Intervention, Crux of Fates pretty clunky and Sorcery Speed. The Instant is harder to play around. Can take two. And then a plan is Flash and Borrower, start leveling up Midnight Clock. And we can rewind the Scarab God. And still Flash and Borrower, and our opponent has seen enough. Glorious Gale could have also worked, maybe it was still better to Gale there. And then we can still play Borrower, but either way, opponent has seen enough. So yeah, this mono blue Vandalian Clique Brawl deck is pretty powerful, and I can imagine kind of obnoxious if you're sitting across from it. So play it with caution, probably wouldn't play this against my best friends. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.